Hey, what's happening, guys? The other day, I was on Amazon looking around for a cheap electronic load. And $24.15 is pretty cheap for an electronic load. Now, this isn't a fantastic electronic load. Um, it pretty much just does constant current, but that's enough for what I'm doing. And, you know, if you're testing batteries, you're testing some simple circuits at home, it should be enough for what you were doing, too. So, this is it, and I've got it here. We're going to take a look at it in just a couple minutes. As is typical for one of these, uh, you know, Chinese objects of electronic goodness, there are no instructions available from the, the, uh, the manufacturer. But let's take a look here. You can see we have electronic load, blah, 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 working mode. It is single mode, constant current, a discharge current of 0.2 to 9.99 amps, step of 0.1 or 0.01, maximum discharge current error, 0.7% to 0.01 amp, maximum error in capacity test, 0.5 amp, 2.5%, 2 amps, 1.5%, 5 amp and above, 1.2%, termination voltage range is 1 volt to 25 volts and discharge voltage 1 volt to 30 volts subject to the MOSFET internal resistance blah 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 but again no real information on how it works so thankfully this user here printed out instructions and I copied them down so we're going to take a look at it and uh, see how it works so here it is. We're looking at like a five inch by maybe almost three inch board here. It's got a daughter board on it. You can see a buzzer there, a crystal, some sort of quad flat pack IC in there running the whole show. And then here on the heatsink, we have our MOSFET. This is an IRFP. Looks like. 150N. Let me see if I can find that. So luckily this is an in, uh, international rectifier chip. You can kind of see their, their logo right there by my thumb. Maybe. If it's a real chip. Anyway, <clears throat> this is the IRFP150N. It has 175 degrees C operating temperature fast switching and is fully avalanche rated. Um, the continuous drain current is 42 amps. The continuous drain current uh, with temperature over 100 and C is 30 amps. Pulse drain current is 140 amps. Uh, power dissipation at 25 degrees C is 160 watts. Uh, gate to source voltage is just about 20 volts. Single pulse avalanche energy is 420 millijoules. And the avalanche current is 22 amps. Operating junction storage temperature minus 55 to plus 175. Soldering temperature for 10 seconds, 300 at 1.6 millimeters from the case. Yeah, there's a lot of information. You can check it out yourself. Let's um, have a look here at the operating instructions. Mode setting. Press the start stop button, which I assume is that. And energize the tester simultaneously until fun... I think that stands for function and release the button rotating the knob fun one for electronic load mode fun two for battery capacity test mode push button one time for entering buzzer setting also rotating knob to be on open buzzer or close buzzer all right so that's function one So we'll, oops, we hold down the button, whoops, power it up until it says fun, fun one, okay, so there we go, function one, push the button one time for entering the buzzer setting, buzzer on, very good. And we can rotate the knob to change it. 
from off to on. Okay. Electronic load mode. Connect with 12 volt DC into electronic load mode. Ensuring a stop state. Run does not light. Run is not lit. We will attach our load over here. Set the current and lower voltage knob. Rotate the knob can be set the value of the current setting and press the knob. Okay. So we are set at 0.6 amp. 0.5. 0 0.2 is the lowest. 9.99, I'm sure. No, 6.66. Interesting. And that is our lower voltage cutoff. One, two volts, three volts. So if we set this for half an amp at three volts, I got a little double A battery doohickey here. So P plus is this one. negative is that one and then for batteries I'm going to use these EBL rechargeable batteries that EBL sent me a couple months ago they are less than stellar we'll put them in here so this should get us about 4.5 volts We'll see if it can handle a half an amp with a low cutoff of three volts. And here we go. It's reading 3.48 volts. It is running at a half an amp. So you can see it's running pretty good. It's at 3.48 volts. half an amp so let's stop it turn this up to 0.7 that one back down to three fire it up running at 0.7 and if I take you up here to have a look at the power supply, you can see we are putting 12 volts into it. It is uh, pulling 0.113 amps at 1.35 or so watts. So it seems to be working pretty well. Let's, uh, let's stop this. And we'll turn this way down to its lowest, which is 0.2. Fire it up again. And this is basically what I wanted this for. Just for running a, a, a steady, constant current load. You know, you can set one up yourself with a MOSFET. It's not that hard, but something simple like this for 20 bucks. You know, it's easy, simple to put in your pack, you know, carry around with you. Now, again, it also has a battery test mode. I didn't buy it for that, but there's the information about it there if you're interested. And here are some fault codes. We have ultra high voltage on the battery, error 2 voltage below the setting termination, error 3 line resistance too large, error 4 circuit failure, error 6 overheating protection, temperature is too low, ultra high voltage under load, ultra high instantaneous power under load. So. 
there are a uh, a lot of protections built into this, and it's a uh, yeah, it works pretty well. All right, let's stop this. Take this guy off here. Disconnect everything, and then let's see what that IC running this thing is in there. There's there's probably a really good chance that it's an Arduino, you know. So this daughter board's held on with four screws here, and then there is a little male header on this and a female header on the board. So this should pop off relatively easy. And then we can get a closer look. Always got to be one, right? If you guys can read that or not, it is a ST microcontroller. Yeah, right that way. There you go. You can see the microcontroller. All the other associated circuitry on the board. Oops. Here's the little control board. And it's got a couple ICs on there too. Yeah, you know, for 20 bucks. I think it's great. What the longevity of it will be. You know, only time can tell. But for $20, I'm not really looking at a lifetime tool here. I'm just looking at something to hold a constant current on a circuit that I may be building. That's really all. So if this thing can do it for 20 bucks for a couple years... I'll be fine with that, you know, because I have no need for a $400 electric load here. If I did, I'd get one. So, that is about it for today on this lovely electronic load. I will put a link to it down below. It is also going to be available in my Amazon store. And if you buy it, make sure you grab the instruction sheet from one of the two uh, reviews listed down below. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to the patrons. This was purchased with patron money, and we wouldn't be here without you. There's a link down below where you can join patron if you like. Buck a month is all we ask. We have a weekly Zoom meeting, and there's some other goodies there for you too. That's it. I'm out. Peace.